and good evening friends welcome to the acns webinars today's webinars features two of the most celebrated neurosurgery not only in their respective countries but around the world the first speaker for us today is a star of webinars and is there is not a single popular webinar organized in the world without him ladies and gentlemen it's my great honor to introduce you to professor luis boba who is the vice president of the plank mm -hmm. professor boba is the professor and chairman department of neurosurgery evangelic medical school curitiba and federal university of parana curitiba brazil He is the professor honoris causa Sechino Medical School Moscow Russian Federation he was the past president of the Brazilian Neurosurgery Society and also the president of the World Skull Base Society's meetings Rio de Janeiro which is going to be hosted in Brazil in March 2022 we are indeed honored by his presence to our webinars we sincerely thank him for accepting our invitation professor boba is going to talk about temporal bone anatomy and approaches a neurosurgical entity The second speaker for today is our honored guest from China Professor Hao Wu. He is the chief physician associate professor and the director of outpatient and emergency group of neurosurgery department of Zhuang Wu Hospital Beijing China. Professor Hao Wu is an expert in dealing with diseases of the spine which includes spinal degenerative diseases, spinal deformities, spinal tumors, tethered cord syringomyelia, carry malformation and other spinal cord diseases. His clinical research of interest is minimal invasive spinal fusion techniques. We are so honored that Professor Hao has accepted our invitation to speak to us in our webinars. Today he is going to talk about oblique lumbar induction interbody fusion for degenerative scoliosis. The chair for today's webinar is Professor Claudio Yampolski. He is the chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery Hospital Italian of Buenos Aires. He is an honorary member of several neurosurgical societies. He is the past president of the Buenos Aires Neurosurgical Society, past president of Argentinian Society of Neurosurgery, and past president of South Cone Society of Neurosurgery. He is the president of the Latin American Federation of Neurosurgical Societies. During his tenure as the president of Plank, he has built strong relations among different national societies. He has published more than 12 chapters and more than 300 presentations and lectures in around various meetings internationally. On behalf of the Education Committee of the ACNS and the President, Prof. Yoko Kato, I would like to sincerely welcome today's speakers, Prof. Luis Boba and Prof. Hao Wu, as well as the Chair, Prof. Claudia Yampolski, to this online platform of ACNS webinars. We are honored today by the presence of uh, distinguished faculties like Prof. Michihiro Kono and Professor Mohan Sharma as well. Liu Bun Seng from Malaysia is my co-host for today. And with that introduction, may I please hand over the proceedings to Professor Jan Polsky. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be here. Uh, thank you to the ACNS uh, and uh, Professor Joko Kato uh, to, chair, to invite me to chair this session. It's a very important educational session and uh, it's the end of the year. Nevertheless, we have the privilege to, uh, to have two very remarkable speakers with two very important subjects. Uh, the first, Professor Borba, will talk on temporal bone anatomy uh, and approaches. And it's, it's a very, very, very interesting uh, topic. Uh, we, as neurosurgeons, we deal with uh, very difficult uh, skull-based uh, procedures. And uh, Professor Borba is a master of, uh, of the temporal bone approaches, and he will show the, a different philosophy of uh, approaching uh, several uh, skull-based pathology. And uh, the second uh, talk uh, will be uh, really uh, Professor Hu. It's uh, also a very uh, interesting topic for spine surgeons because uh, the degenerative and, and uh, scoliosis is uh, really it's uh, it's a challenge for for neurosurgeons, and uh, I think we we learn a lot of his uh, his lecture. So uh, welcome, and uh, with this short introduction, uh, I let Professor Borba to to begin his lecture. Please, uh, Professor Borba. Okay, okay, Cl Professor Jampolski, past president of the Latin America Federation, Professor Michu Kono, one of the idols in neurosurgery. You know, <laughs> I love to hear it, I love to see your presentation. I feel very honored to be here in this Saturday morning with CNS. I think it's the association that grows more and more in the world. There are so many young 
neurosurgeon. So many young people in this area that want to improve, want to learn neurosurgery, and have the same difficulties that you, we have in the real world. Your problem in Asia is our problem in Latin America. The difficulty that you have to treat this patient is our problem also. When you see the presentation of many people from well developed countries, like in Europe or US, they don't have the same patient that we have. Sometimes they are proposing one kind of approach on kind of treatment that the different the people that I have in Brazil, we have in Argentina, we have in Bangladesh, you have in India, you have in many, many parts of the world. And during the last years, I'm seeing a lot of people talk about partial removal, no removal, minimally invasive, why so long surgical procedure? Why to stay one day in surgery to, to remove a tumor? And more than that, I had in the last year, in a meeting in Mumbai to hear a giant of neurosurgery saying that you don't need to go to the lab. You don't need to go to the laboratory. You don't go to dissect. Man, the time to learn in the patient is over. The neurosurgeon that has need to be like a machine, has to train, 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 and after that, go to surgery. My first temporal bone dissection was in December 24, 1993. This was the lab of the ENT department, the University of Arkansas for Medical Science. Dr. Mefsu was just arriving there. Dr. Mefsu arriving in Arkansas in August. I arrived in October. There was no lab very small department, he was start to building this department. And the ENT had a, a lab for temporal bone. And I asked the chairman of ENT if I could go there to learn temporal bone. And he said, why? It's an ENT business. It's not neurosurgical business. I said, but I need to learn temporal bone. It's part of the skull. It's not to treat only skull-based tumor. There is trauma, there is CSCF leak, there is reconstruction, there is the way that it can reach, I, I need to learn. And he gave me the opportunity December 24 afternoon. I now wanna thanks the housekeeping, very nice Cuban lady that opened the lab to me. And I spent the December 24, the day before Christmas, doing the dissection that changed my entire life. When I go to talk to ENT, the ENT asked me why the problem is, is the carotid artery. When I talk to neurosurgeon, the people ask, how, where, where is the facial nerve? The temporal bone is more than just a bone. The temporal bone is the area that you can reach different segments of the skull, of the neural structure of the neck, and also in the, in the ear. We need to understand this anatomy in 3D way to treat lesions around it, or use this bone as a route to reach some areas. You can come from the side, 
now that people start to come from the front. But what's happened in the last years, not last years, maybe in the last decades or two decades, at the neurosurgeons become like, I need this approach to everybody. I need that approach to everybody. I don't need this approach to everybody. And the students become confused. What the people, if I go to Professor Sami, one of the giants of our, our field, he'll say, you don't need to learn temporal bone. I can do everything without understanding the temporal bone. If you travel to US to go to my, to my mentor, Professor Omefte, he'll say, you need temporal bone to ever approach around this area. Remove a little bit more, a little bit less. And as my mentor, Professor Omefti, he was always an open mind. He was thinking like this, that the temporal bone was the key to reach everything. But I remember one day, it was me and Dr. Ture, Yugur Ture from Turkey in the lab. We were together in the lab. I was doing skull base, he was doing the skull, the, the brain anatomy. Professor Omefti came, he and Professor Yashalgil, and said to us, there is a course in St. Louis that is given by Yugo Fish and Maggi Sami. You should go there. And I said, Dr. Omefti, oh, Dr. Omefti, Dr. Sami don't like temporal bone. And Dr. Fish is ENT, he's doing different way. And he said to me, Louis, one rose in each garden after you do your own gardener. This is the way that I try to do this cow base in the last 25 years. I remember the day that Dr. Omefti went to the lab here, Dr. Mark Eisenberg from New York. Here, Dr. Ture. He is me in my nice hair. Now I, have, I don't have it. <laughs> I was doing the dissection of this area here, the jugular foramen. I did this. I cut the sigmoid sinus. I cut the jugular vein to simulate a glomus jugular tumor. What I happened? Very nice layer, but I didn't see it. Dr. Omefti came to the lab and said to me, Louis, you found what I found. You found that the anterior wall of the jugular bulb, if you preserve, you preserve the nerve. She was in front of me but I had no experience. I have no eyes in that time to see what was in front of my eyes. This is the whole of the mentor. And I thank, you, I thank him every day for the support. Today, the most controversial area is the petroclival area. Everybody does his own approach. But more than the approach, I don't like to, to, to fight about approach, you know? The people say, oh, do like this, look, do like that one. I think in philosophy to treat the disease. Example, petroclival meningioma. If you believe that the best way to treat a meningioma is to remove totally the tumor, you need a good approach independent of the approach, from the nose, from the ear, from the top, from the back, from independent of the way you go. But if you go there, just bite the tumor, go home. You don't need approach. But you're not treating the patient. You are treating yourself. Maybe in US, you are treating the lawyer. Now the area have four approaches. Anterior petrosal, posterior petrosal, retrosigmoid, and endonasal. 
there is no tumor that, see, you can use all of them, you can use just one. We need to know the indication and the limitation of each one. Today is very popularized the endonasia. Very nice, isn't it? The picture is wonderful. The video is like Professor Kono videos. Looks like that's not real, that the so nice that is. But you go there by the nose to treat petroclavial meningioma. Look at the distance, the limitation, the sixth nerve, the abducent nerve. Look at the distance here, 8.8 .8 millimeters. You are working in the tunnel, a tunnel like this, but you see. But does not mean that you can reach or reach safely. It means that you can remove just small lesions. And we, as a neurosurgeon with some experience, we know that many in Joma, there is the ball, the big tumor, and the small babies around. If you don't remove this baby, this tumor will come back. There is another approach for first described the removal by Professor Kawazi. After many Japanese, as Professor Hakuba popularized and extend, that the removal of the Petros apex help you to expose the area. But now we know that just removing the Petros apex is not enough. We need to understand the anatomy of the cavernous sinus, especially the posterior part of the cavernous sinus, totally liberate the five, immobilize the five, to expose this area, this area, posterior part of the cavernous sinus, and follow the tumor. The great idea of Professor Kawazi to remove the Petros apex was the way to open the window. But after you open the window or open the door, we need to mobilize between the structure. In this, the combination of the knowledge of Professor Kawazi gave us to Professor Dolenk gave us. And now Dr. Evandro, Dr. Almefti, Dr. many, many people around the world teaching us how to do it. But always when you talk about skull base, you cannot think just in anatomy. You cannot think just in tumor. You have to think in complications. And the most common complication in skull base until nowadays is CSF look. And to treat and to, not, and to resolve in a way to avoid CSF leak is to be prepared. Before to open, we need to see how I will close this big hole. Use the pericranial flap. Use, if you need fascia lata or substitute, use the temporal muscle, use the fascia of the temporal muscle vascularized flap. The same way that the people who does from the nose say vascularized flap, change the history of the anterior approach, in the lateral approach, also the vascularized flap change the history. I will show some case, an example that how we did, how you can manage them. This is a chordoma. You could say, oh man, very easy to come from the nose. Of course, easy to come from here. Remove this, go inside the tumor and come. What's the problem here when you come from the nose? The way that you believe that the chordoma should be treated. If you are coming from the nose, you remove the soft tissue, the soft tumor but you leave this part here, see? 
this eating bone, the part where this cordoma is, like the termites, the, the small. And you have to remove the cordoma and also remove this bone. And for this, you need to see, you need to approach, you need to open the window. Another situation like this, you can come from the nose, of course you can come, but what's safer? You go here, gum from the middle fossa, you did the peeling of the middle fossa, Meckel's cave, uh, uh, Gasserium ganglion, expose the Petrus ICA, here the Petrus ICA, we drill totally not only the tumor by itself, we remove the bone that is around, that you have islands of the tumor. We need understanding the anatomy. We need understand the tumor. We need to know the behavior of the tumor. We need the philosopher to treat. And not just remove this small lesion here, but why the resection of the bone? Let's come again to the middle fossa, the same way I'm showing the way that comes from the middle fossa. Trigeminal schwannoma. Oh, can come, you can do two approaches. Okay. You come from the middle fossa, remove a little bit here. Come from the posterior fossa, remove a little bit here. Maybe you can come from the posterior fossa, work between the nerves in arachnoids and follow the tumor from here. But what this angle here? This is the trigeminal nerve. Why not do the approach through the middle fossa using the anterior petrosal bone, the petrous apex, and follow the nerve? If you follow the nerve from outside to inside, from extra dura to intra dura, you keep the arachnoids to the nerves of the CP angle. If you keep the arachnoids to the nerves into the vessel, is the best way to save the nerves and the vessel. Because this, the Kawazi approach, extending, doing a peeling of the middle fossa is the best way to reach this lesion if one surgical procedure. Now you become brave. If you see 90, 90% of the neurosurgeon you say, you should go for the posterior fossa. I think I should go to the posterior fossa also. But look at this. It's more tumor in the middle fossa. Trigeminal schwannoma. Why don't follow the nerve? Let's do it. Let's come from the middle fossa, do remove part of the petrous apex, decompress the part that is in the middle fossa, see? do the peeling, wide a little bit more the macros, uh, the macros cave in, in polo trigeminale, liberate totally the normal phi. Here's the Superior petrosal, uh, superior petrosal sinus, who can put a little bit of glue or surgery cell. You liberate totally the five. You see there is tumor here. Now you can see the part in the posterior fossa. You see the root. Now you open the dura, you communicate the extra dural segment with the intra dural segment following the fifth nerve, see? the normal roots of the fifth. You are go coming now intra dura, six, pick, but safe, okay? The vessels with the arachnoids to the vessels and go around the tumor with the arachnoids to the perforators. It's not so nice as vascular surgery, but keep the arachnoid there. Like an onion, you know, the onion go in peeling like an onion and leave the arachnoid to the structure. And this onion will come out. In this way, you can come, you can remove the tumor in the posterior fossa, 
you follow the nerve from the middle fossa to the posterior fossa. There is a small part of tumor here yet. Here's the six. See the arachnoid with the vessels. And work extra arachnoidal. See? And follow the fifth nerve from the middle fossa to the posterior fossa. Here's the basilar artery. Here's the fourth nerve with arachnoid protecting the fourth nerve. Here's the six. Here's the contralateral six. Here's the five from the posterior fossa to here. In every case, you can do this? No. Not every case you can save the five, but sometimes you can. Then in the end, you rotate the fascia of the temporalis muscle with posterior part of the femoralis muscle. You preserve the function post immediate post op. The patient has a slight six here. Later you come back. This is the post op, same day, okay? Look at the guy. Looking, preserving the arachnoid and the function, fashion, the area, and the pre and post op. It's understanding the anatomy of the tumor, understanding how the tumor behaves. See, is the best way to do it. There is tumor that really we need to understand temporal bone if you wanna remove the tumor. What's the biggest problem here? This patient has very low symptom. Sometimes very slight diplopia, sometimes just headache, sometimes Dizziness. You do MRI, you have a tumor like this. And some people now is, now is saying, oh, don't need to do anything. Just bite a little bit and leave. Man, this tumor will grow. This patient will die. It's our mission as a doctor to treat, do the best treatment for the patient. Does not mean go do the surgery and leave the patient with a lot of deficit. It's not the, the way. But you need to treat. For this, you need to understand the temporal bone, you need to understand the approaches, and to understand that there is one approach around the temporal bone that they give you all the roots. They call posterior petrosal approach. The posterior petrosal approach, you can use the retro sigmoid approach, you can use the press sigmoid approach, you can use the subtemporal approach, you can use the anterior transpetrosal approach, and you can use the transtentorial approach. You have many, 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 many ways to see it, to play around the area. See? Because this, I do surgery in stand-up. I don't sit. I move the microscope. I use the microscope like a loop to look around, to go around like this. I have mobile a lot. See? I do the surgery in stand sometimes eight, nine, 10 hours, moving, moving, moving all the time to see the different angles. You do like the, have a lesion like this, very, very light. Patient has diplopia. Now it's happening. You go there, microsurgical dissection, remove the tumor, save the structure, very, very short instruments, very short instruments, you see, and go directly to the tumor. And in the end, you have the whole basilar there, have all the structure there, and careful. How long take this? Maybe one day, 10 hours, eight hours, 12 hours, Dr. Mefti always told me, give one day of your life to save the life of the patient. It's our mission as a neurosurgeon. And the post-op will have this, the patient is brave, the sickest didn't improve, she had six, and the post-op was a little bit worse than in the, in the pre. But is it a high price to cure this patient? A six nerve palsy is a high price? I don't believe, man, this lady had, this patient, this lady had this tumor. Now this patient had no tumor in diplopia. 
let's do ophthalmological surgery, let's try to help her, this would be great. Cool, now I know temporal bone, I have to use temporal bone to everybody. Okay, same situation. Total petrosectomy, this is the approach indicated for this case. Yes? Look at me. Look at the MRI. The tumor is totally in the posterior fossa. The tumor is coming here. This is sigmoid sign. What's the easiest way and the best angle to reach from retro sigmoid approach? The classical retro sigmoid approach that we, we use to do every day. You know why? The attachment of the tumor was between the lower cranial nerves and the seven and eight. The main attachment was here. And I could work between the nerves. The tumor gave them the hood. Here's the vertebral artery. Here's the main attachment here. Retro sigmoid approach. I hope a little bit more to, to root, displace a little bit the sigmoid signs, but the retro sigmoid approach. To understand where the tumor comes, to understand where the tumor go is the decision, is the key for the decision of the approach. And pre and post-op. I work between the nerves, the patient had a slight set, seven that it came back later. Now come a different area. Now the people say that, oh my God, this patient go home, Radiation to the head, radiation to the neck, radiation to the whole body, go to the church, pray a lot, look for something. Man, this guy was a 35 years old. Says facial nerve palsy, completely deaf, lower cranial nerve deaths, high tumor in the neck, big tumor in the jugular foramen big tumor in the neck. I need to help this guy. We need to do surgery and try to save his life. To this, you need to understand this anatomy. It's the anatomy of the highest part of the neck. In the anatomy that the head and neck surgery say that is impossible to reach. The ENT say that's very complex. And we as a neurosurgeon should have the treatment of this lesion in this area, that's the jugular foramen. You cannot leave the jugular foramen for the radiation college, not, cannot give the, the jugular foramen for the ENT. You cannot give, leave this area to anybody. We should do, you should learn. And more you do, more you understand, less complication that you have. You should do more and more and more much less complication you have. See Professor Kono, Professor Kono does acoustic neuroma every day. What's the possibility to Professor Kono had a complication today in, in, in vestibular schonoma? Very, very low. Because it is his house. He know every corner of this house. In this era should be our house. I'm trying Hardly during years to make this my house. I still fighting. One day this house will be mine. You do the surgery, we expose the neck, we expose the jugular vein, we expose the tumor inside, we expose the lower kernel nerves. You close temporarily the external carotid artery, identify the hypoglossal, you do the mastoidectomy as wide as you need. Sometimes you need total petrosectomy, sometimes you don't need. And the guy that had that tumor that was in the neck like this, now there is no more tumor in the neck. The guy that had tumor in the jugular foramen like this, now there is no more tumor. And you can identify the facial nerve, expose the facial nerve, and see if the facial nerve is compressed or invaded and understand this complex anatomy. Where do you learn this? In the lab. Because this I cannot agree with this 
great surgeon and giant of neurosurgery that say that you, you learn neurosurgery in the patient. You don't learn neurosurgery in the patient. You learn neurosurgery in the lab. Lab does not mean you go to US to have a very nice cadaver with injection. Lab need to go to the anatomy department in your country. That very old cadaver that we have in my country, you have in your country. Sometimes, sometimes he's smelling bad, but the anatomy is the same. I'm there to learn anatomy and to save the people. I'm not there to make books or presentation. It's in the pre-op and the post-op, pre-op and post-op. You can see this video now is in IGTV, in the, in the Instagram, you can see hold this video. And you can also see this video in the publication of Skull Base by Tiami. It was published in the, in the social media with, uh, with uh, permission by uh, Tiami, Tiami, the uh, Skull Base Tiami. Here's the facial, the petroscarotidine. This is the anatomy. Sometimes I have a patient, I receive a patient like this. The patient did a, the guy tried to treat, did a biopsy and come to me like this. I have to do now a total petrosectomy to expose the whole tumor. Here's the 11th, internal jugular vein, ICA, common carotid artery, 12, the whole tumor in the area. You need to understand now I need to remove totally the petrous bone. And in the end, you have like this, the tentorium, the temporal lobe, the posterior fossa, the ICA, that I follow the ICA from here and do as radical as you can. It's curative, I don't know. This patient now has five, five years follow-up without the recurrence. We did the reconstruction of the facial nerve, we the reconstruction there. Then why I did this incision here, behind here? Because the, the, the guy that did the biopsy, he opened just behind the ear. My incision should be here, okay? To use the flaps and the muscles. I use this, the incision went to the other side. I take the periosteum and the pericranium from the other side part of the temporal, totally, part, totally the, the, the temporalis muscle and rotate down to close the cavity like this. You see, very nicely the muscle here, the pastoidectomy. You have some time to recreate yourself in skull base surgery and in neurosurgery. To the end, I believe that you, I do neurosurgery not like a job. I do a neurosurgery like a pleasure. I love as a good Brazilian in Argentina also, we love the meat. I have to say the Argentinian meat and wine is better than Brazil, but one day it will be okay. <laughs> I, lo I love a nice wine. I love neurosurgery. You need to train, you need to help is the way to learn and to treat the people. Next year, our ideas with many, many, many friends from around the world will be in this book available to all this young generation that still believe that neurosurgery is a beautiful speciality. You should keep the real neurosurgery alive. Thank you, thank you very, very much. See you in Rio 2022, the beautiful city of Rio de Janeiro. This is the hotel. You have all of you there in this wonderful place to have fun, to enjoy neurosurgery, and to exchange experience. Thank you very, very, very much. Sorry, Thank I spoke you. too much. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. Thank you, Professor Borba, for an amazing uh, lecture on the whole uh, spectrum of the temporal bone and, and different approaches. Yes, may I kindly invite our honored guest, Professor Michiro Kono, to give his comments? Okay. okay. Go, uh, easy uh, Go easy with me. Go easy with me.
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed, I enjoyed your uh, educational and passionate uh, lecture. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, I totally agree with uh, you about the approach selection uh, for the Petrus or uh, Peter Kreibel meningiomas. So uh, in uh, selecting the appropriate approach, uh, I think uh, the relationship between the seventh and eighth cranial nerves and tumor uh, is very important. And uh, when the seventh and the eighth cranial nerve uh, lung uh, dorsally uh, to the tumor, uh, big tumor, uh, I usually use the combined transpetal approach uh, like you. And, but uh, so uh, seventh and the eighth cranial nerves uh, locate uh, so uh, uh, rostrally or caudally yeah. or ventrally. So uh, I, I use the retro sigmoid approach like you. So uh, today, so I totally agree with you. And uh, uh, Jaguar Flamin is your house and uh, you. also my house. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank, you, you thank you so much, Professor Kono, for those comments. I hope we all get invited to your house one day and get familiarized with all your <laughs> comments. <laughs> yeah, we can see that in the background. Yes, my co-host, Dr. Liu. Uh, hello, Prof. Thanks for the very inspiring talk. I think I, I very fortunate to get to listen to you second time in this month. Uh, oh. I, so far, I never see uh, so so inspiring talk from most of the surgeons. And uh, I think the braveness in you that, 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 that give us uh, more spirit to carry on our career uh, as a young neurosurgeon. Uh, my question to Prof is, uh, in aggressive uh, skull-based tumor, for example, if you suspect sarcoma, how you go about it, uh, whether you be more aggressive or less aggressive, or you tend to go towards more uh, adjuvant therapy? Thank you, Professor. Thank you, thank you. I think you have... Um, who decides the kind of approach you do for malignant disease? Is the oncologist. If, if he say to you, I, I need you go there and remove the tumor, you go there and remove aggressively. But he's, he say to me, do the biopsy, I can treat with chemotherapy, I do the biopsy. <laughs> if he say to me that a MRI and CT scan is typical of some disease, I can treat with radiation therapy, do radiation therapy. Surgery is not the only goal of a neurosurgeon. I think the goal of neurosurgery is the best treatment to the patient. You see? I see Professor Shu here, uh, Bin Shu. And hello. <laughs> say hello. You see, he's a master in, 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 in bypass. He doesn't do five, six, seven bypass to the patient because he wants. Mm -hmm. He doesn't the patient need. Yes. Sometimes they need just one, two, or three. This is the philosophy you, that you, you need to have our generation, young generation. I'm not so young now, but the young generation see, we cannot lose our goal as a doctors that do the best treatment for the patient. We are seeing, I'm from one, when I started Scout Base, start to go to the meetings of Skull Base. I see Claudio, we all together in many, many meetings. Some people was coming there and remove the tumor and show the tumor like a trophy. Mm -hmm. The trophy is not the tumor. The trophy is the patient. If you, sometime, if you need to go there and do just a biopsy and go home. I remember uh, Jeremy Noma from Pineal. The people was, I used to go there and remove totally perfect, see the patient, boom. After they, they, they know that if you do a small doses of radiation, maybe disappear, maybe germinoma. Mm -hmm. Now you need to do the biopsy. Yeah. You are treating patients, see? The philosophy, the one thing I want to say, I say, all the things that I said, that's we are doctors first. We need to be prepared. 
and to be prepared and not in the head of somebody. You need to go to the lab, to go to the anatomy, to study, to go to see Professor Connor, to go to see Professor Jan Polsky, to go to see Professor Hal, Professor Bish. Go there and learn. See, see, yeah. see. Professor Yashagiri spent 17 years in the lab. You know, 17, one, one seven. 17 years in the lab before his first microsurgical clipping of aneurysm. We, we need to do this. In this young generation now, they say, oh, I, I sent you to do that one. I, say, I know that neurosurgical life is not easy. I know to be a neurosurgeon is not easy. To lose so many nights working or without sleep thinking in the patient, what I had to do, what, why, what I did, all of us will have success or no success. You, me, Professor Kono, Professor, everybody, but keep it focused. I'm sure that Professor Bin Shul, when he started his, 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 his vascularization, how many times had thrombose? <laughs> and he said, I will come back again, I will do better, I will do better. Now it's like a game for him. And the many young people that you watch me now, that you'll be watching in the YouTube, never give up if you believe that you are doing the right way. If you're not doing the right way, change, please. Stop it. But you believe in the people that you trust, like the people here that is in the pioneers. You do your best job. Okay? I'm becoming a priest now, no? no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Professor. A lot, lot, lots of <laughs> wisdom coming from yeah. the great man, Dr. Louis Baba. <laughs> Professor Zubin, Thank your you. comments before we go into the next speaker? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Louis Boba is my uh, good friend. And uh, actually, uh, thank you for you again for your uh, amazing presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Thank you, thank you thank so you. much. So I think Professor Boba will look out for you after Professor House talk in case you may want to leave okay. for your emergency meeting. Okay. Thank you so much for okay. such an inspiring talk. Thank you. Uh, we're looking forward to see you in 2002. <laughs> gracias, Claudio. So gracias. Much. Gracias. Bye. Todo. Bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye. Professor Yampolsky. Back to you. Thank you, Claudio. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's my honor to be here. So I think it's important opportunity to me to share my experience for the uh, Lambert disease. So uh, thanks a lot for the Professor Xu, thanks for the president of CNS. So, so um, today I will, uh, the, the, uh, my topic is uh, minimal invasive correction for the ESD. Uh, you know, uh, when I, in uh, 2009, I focused on the spine disease. So, oh, 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 sorry. So, um, Firstly, I introduced uh, two kids for uh, in here. So one kid is a female, 15, three years old. He feel very uh, low back pain three months and the low limb pain uh, for one month. So for examination, we find the muscle strength of the left side of uh, low extremity have uh, decreased, just fall. And another thing is normal, uh, include reflection and the pathological signs and muscle tone is normal. We check the x ray we just find the L3, L4, have the shift uh, sideways, and also L5, L4, L5, this girl have a, a, a problem. So we do the MRI. We find the disc uh, single is abnormal. Also, we have endoplate have a model, a model single. So, but uh, I think the disc herniation is not serious and also spine canal is uh, no stenosis, but the patient feel very wise. So I checked the CT scan also. We just uh, find not uh, gasification, also not a uh, bone breather. Also, I think it's uh, soft uh, for the uh, lambo. So the vascular score for the lambo is fine and for the low lamp pain is H. So it's pain area. 
So for these kids, but I think it's uh, it's very young, just a uh, 15 three years. So I uh, select the minimal massive. The, the technique is olive, name olive. So from lateral, we put the uh, two kids just uh, for two level. Uh, you can find the it, it, when I put the kit, you can see the it, it's a the rotation, and uh, we use the lateral instrument to the fixation, and it's uh, after surgery, we do the extremes. It's a EP view and lateral view. Also, we do the bending view. It's a stable, so the patient feel very well. It's just a, I think after surgery, just one day he he leaves the bed and he can work. Another case is a female, 16, uh, nine years old. The patient suffer from low back pain for five years. The system are gravity with a right low uh, lamp radiation pain. So she had difficulty in working without the assistance. So phys physical examination is, uh, is normal, it's okay. I think uh, no reflection, pathological signs is uh, negative and the muscle tone is okay. So it's pain area, but uh, what's your uh, score for the bank is very high, it's seven. And uh, what's your uh, what's score for leg is three. So, but lumbar spine ODA is just 5, 8%. So we do the extreme, we can find the serious uh, Deformate and uh, I think the corpse is uh, almost a 16 degree of uh, serious scoliosis. Also, we find SV is a 133. I think SV set to balance is okay. So we do the bending, it's a very tough. And also we do the CT scan. We find the most level, this could have a gasification, and we find the on the con concaver, concaver is have a more bone bridge. So it's a transfer view. We can see the uh, serious rotation for the uh, vertebrae. So we do the MRI, so, but the spine canal is, uh, is good also. So we find the uh, L5 to S1. I think uh, abnormal uh, single for the disc, but I think it's uh, high and I think it's okay and bleed is okay. So it's a transfer view. We can't find the uh, uh, not the serious uh, disc herniation. So we check the bone quality. I think it's a, uh, uh, I think it's not bad. So the diagnosis is a endo spine deformity. So what about the stranger for the treatment? It's a posterior only or anterior, anterior or posterior? Or what about UAV and LAV? So uh, do you want to perform the uh, ostomy or what kind of, of, of ostomy? So one state or two state? So uh, our uh, surgery is a two stage. And the first surgery, we just do the L5 to uh, L1 to 5 uh, oblique uh, lumbar interbody fusion. And the second surgery, we do the L5 to S1 mist leaf plus uh, T11 to S1 PPS. So this is the first surgery, we just do the full level olive. I think it's a sagittal view. You can see the, I think the good lordosis for this, just, uh, just use the olive, you can get a very good lordosis. And also we do the, we check the coronal view. And I think the corpse angle improved obvious. So it's the MRI. We can see the, you know, the spine canal decompression, I think. And we do the extremes again. So you find find the corpse angle uh, uh, improved obviously. Also SVE, also P PT is good. So the patient feel well, feel very happy. So he, he don't want to accept another operation. But I just worry about the fusion rate. We just feel uh, worry about the kid maybe will leave. So we do the post two surgery. We miss to leave for the L5 to S1 and the PPS from T11 to uh, S1. It's a three month post operation and it's one year post operation. Okay, the patient was score for the back is, is just one and the uh, uh, was score for the leg is zero and ODS score is uh, uh, 24%. So 
the two keys is uh, degenerative lambosclerosis. I think the adult degenerative spine deformity is a coronal cough angle greater than 10 degree or a sagittal imbalance of spine deformity due to the spine degeneration. So many caused by the degeneration of the intervertebrate space. So the disease symptoms increased and symptom worse with age and with prevalence of approximately uh, 32% or to the 68% in age. So with increased uh, wideness of disease, the number of patients diagnosed with adult degenerative spinal deformity has increased by 157% in the last 10 years. But I think this uh, data from American. So uh, in China, I think many, many people, especially in Shanghai, in Beijing, it's a big city, we have more and more kids in the, in the old patient. So uh, I think it's a, it's a very, very high relative quality of life. So if you want to treat this disease, you have to understand the coronal and the sagittal deformity. So you have to not, 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 not only focus the spine, you have to focus on the hip extension, knee flexion. You just focus, the, you have to uh, care the, the joint is okay or, or, or abnormal. So you, you can think, think about the, the wall balance or not the, uh, just on the spine. The wall balance is important thing. Or plavic is, uh, is uh, normal or is, uh, uh, is horrible thing or, or uh, is a uh, 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 line. So the pathogenesis uh, for the <coughs> endodegenerative degenerative scoliosis is uh, a symmetric degeneration or uh, asymmetric loading induced to the asymmetric deformity. So the patient feels uh, you, you have the in, uh, stability and uh, have the deformity. So you have a stenosis. So bone quality decreased. So everything is progressive. So they have a pain, have a cosmesis, everything. So the patient have the Symptom is a pain. I think most of patient, the important the sim, sim, symptom is pain, uh, back pain or leg pain. So they also have the neurological cortication. So also because pain and the cortication, they have limited activity. So also introduce the mental burden. So how to do the pain, introduce the pain management is a medical burden. So limited activity due to the nursing requirements is a social burden. So mental burden, uh, mental burden introduced self-denied and the decompression for patients. So as a social, uh, certainly as a war age and the adult population increased, there is a significant increase in adult with a degenerative spine deformity. I think when they are older, so um, I have to face to the, this, uh, more, more and more elder people. So in case of great social economic burden and is a disease and adult that needs the urgent attention notice. So I think the treat strategy, treatment strategy, I, I have the three points. One point is decompression. I think it's very important for the nerve. And another thing is the, because we are old, so everybody become from the stabilization to the unstabilization. So you have to back to the stabilization. So you have to restore balance. So we are goal is a harmony correction. It's not, I think you, most people will uh, know this um, uh, uh, fact, factory. So you have to uh, let patients SV, PT, also low doses to the good to the level. So get a good uh, outcome. So traditional way is a postural approach to ostomy. So you have to, to do the SPO or PSO. So very big trauma for the muscle. So I think many, many problems for this, for this disease treatment. So ASD always a stiffness and a difficult to uh, manipulate. So require long pointing, uh, many uh, multi-segment pointing ostomy to release the spine, or PSO required to the correction set to balance. So ostomy and long segment correction lead to the long operation time. 
blood loss and a great trauma. So uh, even we do the so big operation, but the post-operative fixation feeling, PGK or DGK or other serious complications are very common. So patient requires surgery almost at all and the poor surgical tolerance, I think especially in, in Asia, uh, in Chinese people, you know, most uh, old people can't accept uh, so big surgery. So elder patients have no access to the surgical treatment and have a very poor quality of life. <clears throat> so we need the new technique. We need the minimal invasive. We need the less operation time and EBL. We need the many plates of, of degenerative space, the compression, fusion, and contraction. So today I will introduce Olive technique. Uh, in the two, 2018 years, WNS have the um, people, the, the, the article is the lateral number in the body future in the arrow and 10 years experience. And he's a good conform this uh, is a technique. So we know we used to choose the P leaf or T leaf. The O leaf and X leaf, I think it's just uh, uh, 10 years. Uh, most people accept and know this technique. So some people know the A leaf, I think this this uh, technique is uh, is very good for the. Uh, I think it's really uh, minimized. So you have to uh, care the psoas, and we care the artery. We care the ureter doctor, ureter treat. So, what about only for the ASD? I think one fusion stable. Two, the technique can restore disc curve high and the good uh, decompression. And it can restore partly sagittal balance, and it can restore partly coronal balance. Also, it can more power to the rotation. So we do the anatomy of olive. This technique is used as the exciting corridor. It's a safe and less invasive. In here, I have to um, I have to see most people, most of students like to use the lattice approach. Some people worry about the right side. But I think from the right or left, it's okay, no problem, but the, the space is uh, enough. So uh, different level, you may be a different, uh, a little different for L1, 2, 2, maybe remove the rib or maybe you can't the kingdom. Uh, some uh, L4 to 5, maybe uh, the, the plavic is very high, it's a, a little difficult, but it's okay. I think uh, if you know the anatomy, it's easy to export to the uh, disc curve. So I think most of people don't believe the uh, indirectly decompression outcome for a uh, use this technique. It's uh, my article. So I checked many uh, factory. Uh, fa I think the, the decompression outcome is, is good. It's no problem. So it's my case. So we use a very big kit. You can see the olive restory in, in the very uh, what very high stringer and ligament flavor increase the former high and the spine canal area and the pre with a good direct uh, decompression effect. So also the we can correction the in the side two and the kernel plan. You have to correct a release abnormal space just like this. You can see we on the X ring we have to care to to not break the end plate and we use a spreader it can correct and release the abnormal space. So also olive technique can make LIV horizontal. For example, this case is we, we just do the one level, the cost of a lumbo from 20 degree to the 12 degree. We use the one, one big kit. It's the after surgery MRI shows the spine canal is good. Also we can so the here is is uh, is open also, so the technique have a more powerful the, to derotage. You have to from convex not to concave, concave. So use a convex, you can choose the um, easy to expose, easy to find this curve. But the important thing is to derotage. I will show the case. Also, the technique can restore set to balance because the kids you have can eight degrees, six degree, maybe 10 degree. You can, you can maybe uh, uh, any degree you, you want, you can. 
So we use some big degree. You can see the lordosis get a good degree, get good uh, restore. So maybe sometimes you can break the ligament, so you can get a very very high degree for the lordosis. So it's my case, female, sixteen years old. It's a qualification for three years. It's just fine at four to five. Have a, a six, have a serious problem. Also at three to four. So we check the x rays It's a um, scoliosis. We just do the two level olive and PPS, PPS from L uh, three and uh, two to L five. So the patient feel well. It's a post operation. We can see the it's a kit in here, and we can expand kennel is open also. So it's another case. I think it's case uh, 16 four years a low back pain and intermediate calcification. It's a uh, difficult to, for working. You know from if this case we uh, from posterior to do, I think it's difficult to derotation, and uh, because a 16 four years old is a stiff. So we use a uh, uh, L2 to five olive and. Uh, Combine percutaneous scroll. I show you. So we from convex to do the uh, release the the, the disc and pull the big cage. It's more powerful to the derotate. So the P, from the PPS we use the navigation to pull the scroll. It's easy. So we have to need the global alignment. So is correction of lordosis enough to change the lordosis and the PMF or that's globe alignment? So if you want to get this uh, uh, result, you have to elevate the thrombo, thoracic and lambo kyphosis or uh, thoracic kyphosis flagball or regent. You have to take care. So maybe you from the CT or uh, X-ring, um, especially you, uh, you, you do the flexion X-ring. So you have to, find is a true male alignment or fixed male alignment. So we also use, use uh, um, puncture to uh, uh, before the, we, we have to let the patient have a rest to check or uh, let the patient working uh, half an hour to check again. So also we use uh, those, some block and uh, most of people have get a good the, 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 the outcome and to uh, elevate the uh, alignment. So it's my case. We can see it's a corpse is a, a 13, a 10, 13, five centimeter. So it's LV, SVE is a 100.49 millimeter. So the patient can't work in long time. It's just 100 meter. So we put the one, two, three, use the olive, just a two, a three level disc. The patient gets well. So as we choose the 45, one point millimeter, so very good. So also PT, P, PT and lolosis uh, to the nine. And another case you can find is uh, uh, after surgery, cervical uh, ACDF and also PI lolosis and SV is abnormal. We just do the one, two, three, stand along olive, just need the 10 centimeter, 10 centimeter uh, incision, so the patient feel very well. So it's another case. You can see um, it's a sagittal imbalance. SV is 139.8 millimeter. Okay, if the patient do the CT scan, we find most gasification in, in the disc. So the patient very old, it's a 19, three years old. So we from the lateral to do the three level olive and also combine the lateral fusion. And because of bone quality is not good, we put the bone cement. So it's one month after Sorry. surgery. It's an old patient, he's very, very happy. So sometimes we uh, uh, accept, perform the one stage, sometimes we Perform the two stage surgery, so it's a one, uh, just one stage. So, but we need a six hour because we uh, we do the only if we just need one hour. Uh, but uh, when we uh, have two, get another proposition and uh, put the 
use the navigation, so we need the long time. So, but this is from the, we, we perform two stage. One stage, we do the olive and we check it again. So we do another, uh, one week after we do the PPS. But why we select two stage? I think the, if we do the olive, we check the x ring again, we find the fusion level, we can short the fusion level. For example, maybe this case we from T10 may be uh, very high to the plavic. But uh, when we do the olive, I think the corpse decreased the series. So we just uh, short fusion for this patient is okay. So it, for this case, it's a, a serial, uh, uh, serious uh, uh, sagittal uh, balance. So SV is 135.7p. We do the olive three level. So SV to the 31.2 millimeter and the PI to low doses mismatch is 20 degree. So this patient feel very well. He can't want to accept the another uh, survey, but we are uh, insist that we, okay, we do the PPS again for this patient. So I can show my uh, video. If one level, we can use a very small incision and um, because it's a three level muscle, we just uh, use uh, the, the yeah, just like this. Don't break breaking muscle. It's just uh, from the muscle, the strips. Okay, and uh, it's transfer muscle. Okay, we can see the fat. So in here, we use a microscope or maybe use a loops. You can see clearly the psoas in here and you can careful to uh, dissect the muscle and you can see that this uh, uh, artery and some, uh, uh, sometimes you can see the uh, urative track. So we have to put the, put the something, yeah, put the mark in here and um, so you have to check the disc, you, you should uh, cut the disc, you use your knife to remove the disc here. So we use the, uh, remove the disc. You, in here, you have to take care of end plate. Don't break the end plate because if you break uh, uh, breaking the end plate, you put kit will uh, present the subsidence. So the operation will, you better operate. So we can use a uh, trimmer to design the kit. You can, you can do the extreme. So you, you can remove the soft end plate careful and increase the, the fusion rate. So we use this, put the kit in here. So we do the action again. So just uh, close the muscle and uh, close the skin. So some people very old, they can't accept a two stages operation. So we just want to combine the lateral instrument, uh, instrument fusion. So we get a good surgical outcome and no serious complication. So it's my patient's data is uh, red, uh, radiology and a clinic outcome. So the was call from 16H to the 2H, uh, 2.0 and ODI decrease the series. So this is a case we just uh, do the one level. We use uh, because it's a degenerative spondylosis and uh, it's a preoperative uh, AP view and it's lateral view. It's after surgery, AP view and lateral view is a CT scan. 
So we just do the L4 to find what degenerative change of intervertebrate space happened. However, the kernel and the sagittal spine alignment has been improved. And in another case, before surgery, after surgery, two kids, two level, put the big kit and also put the lateral fusion and uh, can correction the degenerative spine deformate. I think the, 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 the action is very good. So it's another kit. You can see this transfer view degenerative. And also we use the olive to the three level and uh, put the lateral fusion. And also use the bone salmon to, to change the, um, improve the bone quality. So uh, it's my experience for the um, EDS. I think, um, I think when I use the, the olive technique, uh, more and more, I, I believe this this technique. Uh, we have used the ATP technique. Maybe we can uh, get more uh, improved with this this, uh, this technique. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Wu, for an um, outstanding uh, lecture on a very difficult topic, and it's uh, the minimal invasive correction of deformity. Uh, thank you. I don't know if there is there is yeah. any comment or question. We'll, we'll open the topic for discussion. Yeah. So just I would like to ask, well, you use neural navigation in your instrumentations always, right? Yeah, we use navigation. So yeah. uh, maybe in the next month, I will use a uh, uh, Rosa Robert. Rosa. <laughs> oh. for the tennis court. Right, right. Very, very interesting. So uh, may, may I kindly ask in your uh, MIS uh, pedicle screws, when you use minimally invasive transpedicular screws, what is your rate of uh, malposition screws when you use without navigation and with navigation? Yeah, we, we, if we don't use navigation, we just use X-Ring. Uh, I think use X-Ring is easy. We just get a true EP view and uh, I think it's safe, but uh, you have to accept more uh, X-Rings, you know. Thank you so much. Yes, Thank you. You. Uh, hello, Prof. Uh, thanks for a very nice uh, presentation. Uh, uh, my question, uh, Prof, is uh, regarding the lateral body screw. Uh, in cases that have a severe kyphal scoliosis, uh, because we know that kyphal scoliosis are mainly due to a rotational deformity. Uh, uh, do you think that, uh, because now we're still relying on 2D images, uh, anterior, posterior, and lateral view, uh, to, to roughly to tell us how much correction we need. And I have expected a few cases uh, with the orthopedic team. Uh, and most of the time that we can only determine intraoperatively and uh, most of the time the best approach is the posterior approach uh, for kyphal scoliosis cases. Uh, in in uh, professor experience, that is there any such case that the correction can be done just by lateral screw or body screw? Thanks, professor. Okay. Uh, so I think so. You know uh, the sagittal, bel uh, sagittal balance. Uh, you know, most people will uh, get the outcome. You need the PT, uh, just a twenty degree, or maybe uh, uh, SV uh, is just a five, uh, fifteen centimeter. But you know, I think it's for the American or Europe people, because I uh, also Asia people. I, I don't think the the SV you have to to the. I think the uh, in for, for, uh, for example, for Chinese people, I think the SV just uh, 100, I think or 18 uh, centimeter is okay. The patient feel very well. So most people, we just do the uh, correction is, uh, uh, is uh, you know, you, you can get a very good uh, uh, PT is, uh, is uh, just a 10 degree from a posterior. So, the, the very good view for the extremes, but the patient feel very, very uncomfortable. He can't uh, long time uh, sit. So we just use only if you can see, it may be 18% uh, correction, I think. And uh, it's just stable. So the patient feels very good. So our kids, most of the kids we accept a four level only if he gets a better and uh, he just uh, leaves the better just one day or two days after surgery. But 
We from posture to the PPS, the patient feel very pain just on the bed one week or five days we can leave them. So I you know, I think about it, we we have to from the posture to do the PPS get the good the extreme view for the correction. I, I'm think maybe if the very good fusion rate, which I think just the olive, just olive stand alone. If if not transfer, okay, I think so good. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very Thank much. So in that case, we'll come to a conclusion of this webinar. I'll give it back uh, to our Professor Yampolsky, your concluding comments, Professor. Thank you so much. and. Uh... Uh, thank you all for, for, for being this uh, morning, afternoon uh, on Saturday, uh, listening to, to a spectacular lectures on com completely different topics, but uh, that really address the, the, the difficulty and the challenges of our specialty. Uh, so the, the difficult uh, skull based approaches and also the difficult spine uh, approaches for complex uh, pathologies. So, uh, I think uh, there's uh, this a lot of uh, to do and to keep on working uh, on this, uh, these fields. And uh, well, uh, just uh, to thank once more ACNS for this uh, commitment for education and for inviting me to chair this, uh, this session. And uh, it's, uh, it's near the, the end of the year. So I wish you uh, the best uh, for next year and I wish the pandemic will be over and we can meet uh, face to face, not by, by, <laughs> by virtually uh, in the ne next year. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Jan Polsky. <clears throat> I hope the pandemic ends soon and we'll all meet together face to face someday soon. I'll just conclude this officially on behalf of the Education Committee of the ACNS and the President, Professor Yoko Kato. I would like to sincerely thank today's speakers, Professor Louis Boba and Professor Hao Wu, as well as the chair for today, Professor Claudia Yampolsky, for coming here and spending their time with us, uh, teaching us about their respective specialities. Thank you so much, Dr. Liu, for joining today. Thank you so much, all the distinguished faculties, Professor Michiro Kono, Professor Zubin, Professor Zubin's name I cannot forget. He has been tremendous support for us from China uh, consistently with us. Thank you, everybody, for joining. It is bye-bye from all of us.